Good morning to everybody and thank you for coming. I'm here to talk about, um, like it's already been said, an ideal education with open source. So what do I mean by that and why am I here to tell you about it? So I'm here as a recent graduate from Norfolk State in, the, in a Bachelor's of Computer Science. And I'm also a recent fellow of the UC Santa Cruz uh, Catalyst program um, as of last year. So believe it or not, I didn't know what open source was as of what is now effectively a year. Um, so I came to know open source through the open source program and I've been fortunate enough to have numerous experiences in open source um, since then. So what does that mean for you? Um, it means I'm hopefully here today to spark a conversation among those of you most more experienced in FOSS, which I'm assuming is everybody in the room, um, to see where you can dream more about open source education, where there are potentially missed opportunities, and what open source education could look like um, moving forward. So... This is all through the lens of my amazing, completely original, never once thought about ideas. Uh, now, there can be slightly different interpretations of the meaning of open source, but for the, op for the purposes of this talk, what I mean when I say open source, I mean publicly accessible, open to collaboration, open to a community and that it has an open source license. So suppose that you're in college and open source is as a widespread concept as internships are today. Opportunities for open source projects could exist for every discipline, allowing for the collaboration of students among art, literature, business, engineering, and more. Open source would be more diverse, allowing for other disciplines to pick up the work where another may falter. So, so far I've observed that as though the core of many open source projects is primarily centered around people that come from very tech oriented backgrounds who have improved non-technical abilities to then improve their technical project. But what if it didn't have to be that way? Uh, a maintainer uh, for a project might be too clear cut to write out friendly documentation for newcomers to a project. But what if they had a journalist as a contributor? Um, what if that was the same for all other aspects of the project? A legal uh, major to help with aspects of licensing a design major to ensure colors and uh, user-friendly accessible um, to their project, and a business major to help create a plan and find potential funding opportunities for their project. The people that you meet in college, regardless of their field, could at some point become your fellow maintainer, contributor, or advocate to an idea that you create. And the same thing goes vice versa. You could be their fellow contributor, maintainer, or advocate for their project. This extends to professors as well. Many of them do research as part of their career and can sometimes be dif difficult to find passionate professors who are willing to go out of their way to introduce a new concept such as open source, which is not necessarily written in a textbook. So by having open source touch every discipline, it'd be easier to at least find one passionate professor um, in most universities who'd be willing to advocate for open source there. So assuming professors are on board, projects could exist that can give you real world experience and feedback in the comfort of a learning environment, as well as grades or majors across schools. But why even stop there? What if you could invite your friend from high school that you know that is studying the same thing as you 
but in a different college, right? And collaborate on the same project for, say, a course credit, which could benefit you both, not only in experience, but in academia as well. So on a quick show of hands, how many of you in the room have ever had the idea to create an app, an online tool, or a business of your own? Great. Me too. Um, so many young minds and education have great ideas as well that never see the light of day because of a feeling of lack in skill, finding the right people to work with, or a lack of actionable steps that will lead interest and exposure to their projects sooner rather than later. In these cases, the ideas normally exist as a note on a paper or a notebook or a wandering thought that is going to be eventually forgotten. Um, but if open source is introduced early on in education as a place for ideas or entrepreneurial endeavors to live and grow, Many of these unseen ideas can become a public project, which could be continued at any moment, receive feedback to motivate the main tenor to boost its development, or even contributors willing to help. Um, if any of you have ever heard of the concept, um, I like this concept called gamification. It has two great aspects of it that I think that open source implements in a way very well. Number one, instant feedback. Um, not necessarily um, you're going to have a rush of people coming into your project and commenting right away as soon as you make it open source, but definitely it opens the doors for feedback. And then number two, fun yet serious tasks that will teach you valuable lessons and skills. Um, yeah. So open source can provide a sense of freedom to explore new ideas without feeling the same pressure as creating a business while equally having the work be as serious. But I believe it opens the door to a first actionable step that can lead to many more. Essentially taking the weight off of you and teaching you initial skills to have an open source mindset and convincing students to make their idea public and open to collaborate. We might even see the next Linus Torvald, which has been hiding around for some time and just was never introduced to open source or not. Um, that can also be a thing. But if anything, uh, college is a place filled with diversity of knowledge and experiences. And if a group of people who have an idea that they're doing convince themselves to do open source together, Bumble, bundle together, create a project of their choosing while leaving each person a piece of the puzzle, it would essentially be the same structure as a business, more or less. Um, therefore, creating a pseudo form of what their idea could eventually be and then formalize the details over time. Um, the outcomes of people tricking themselves into doing the work would be A, making a great open source project, which remains open forever, hopefully. Uh, B, creating a successful business that advocates for open source practices. Or C, they do nothing, but at least they learned and whatever they expose can probably help others um, in the process if they find the information. So that brings me to my third topic. The real world at home means more open source minds. So whether it be personal circumstances, failing to get chosen for internships, or not having the time to do extracurriculars, there are many reasons why students fail to learn why, what real world work is like when attempting to gain experience in their field. But if targeted correctly, open source can be an advocate or sort of a new kind of default option for people with difficult circumstances to gravitate towards and kind of gain experience by becoming a contributor to a project. A student who works uh, can make time after their shift to build a contribution, a person taking care of a family member, or a person who doesn't 
have the means to go to physical career opportunities um, and more, they can just take 20 minutes out of their day and do open source, right? And week after week, that'll build upon their skills and also build um, their network around them. So no matter what the field, I think that open source can be a stable way to build skills that are directly transferable to the workplace, little by little. Um, some people can never be in open source forever, and they need a stable and viable way to make a living. Um, so they might aim for corporate. But does that mean that open source should not be a part of their environment? Coming back to the first point, people can learn to communicate better and filter information more effectively for other um, disciplines to digest, which later on, moving f into the work means that they can avoid the common trope where seemingly the dev team is the enemy of the marketing team or the design team. Um, People can recognize and value the places where they learn their skills from, and I think that open source is definitely no different. Um, ideally, somebody who learns through open source stays in open source in the long run, but that isn't always the case. But even if they do grow out of the role of a direct contributor, they will at least become lifelong advocates for everything open source. So to recap, uh, number one, open source for every discipline. Number two, uh, pseudo startups kind of trick people into learning by advocating for growing their business and software ideas uh, through open source when they start. And then number three, uh, to become a default or kind of like option for those who are busy um, and have difficult circumstances. So if those ideas are implemented, I think that a lot of open source issues today um, can be addressed over time. For the lack of new contributors and ideas to projects, a more open invitation to more people in open source, multidisciplinary, um, will lead to an increase in quality and quantity of contributors over time. It's kind of like Moore's Law, but contributors um, so for a lack of funding in open source, you can, by becoming a pathway for entrepreneurial endeavors to grow, um, a generation of people with new businesses could help support open source as it was their place of origin, essentially, for their idea. Um, and three... For a struggle between getting corporate to understand what open source actually is and contribute back, um, having more people with an open source mindset by exposing a helping hand now can help to a better pushback overall um, for open source to be appreciated by businesses as many open source advocates can push from seemingly one side now but in the future it could look like this. It could push from every single side. So while there are a lot of potential challenges with these ideas and research to be done, I have no doubt that all of you in some way can feel identified um, with what I've said here today. And uh, I didn't list the problems because those aren't important. You guys can figure it out. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. I'm sure there must be a lot of questions in your minds after hearing these talking points, but if you take anything else away from what I've described today, before asking yourselves any other question, ask yourselves this. What would your ideal education be with open source? Thank you. Yeah.
I think that um, off of kind of like one of the, if open source um, provides them a way in school for them to build an idea with either them or a group, um, an idea that they're really interested in and passionate about, they can really construct a project that leads to more opportunities outside of school. So if that kind of really paves the way for them, they can definitely become a permanent kind of like contributor or maintainer towards that uh, project. Um, I think that'll carry over um, after they graduate, if they had a personal connection with it before. Um, and it kind of provided them with the skills that they needed to move forward. I do have a couple of ideas, but because it's being live stream, I kind of don't want to share just because there might be really good developers out there. They're going to take that idea, but you know, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Well, as of right now, um, potentially, I'm trying to, in my school specifically, I'm trying to keep in contact with uh, people just to let them know a little bit more about open source. Uh, hopefully find that uh, passionate professor that is willing to kind of like spread the word around more and also get uh, the people around me to really advocate for open source as well. Um, as far as um this kind of model presented here today um this is kind of the start so this is going to be recorded i'm here at fossey specifically just to present this idea and hopefully at future conferences as well Yeah, so I came to know through, uh, for those of you who I didn't see the beginning of the presentation, at the beginning I mentioned that um, I came to learn about open source over a year ago, uh, more or less. Um, and then, you know, I'm here now, so I'm kind of involved in open source now, but that's all thanks to the UCSC Catalyst program. Um, so I came to know through to the program through a computer science course. Um, it was a presentation that was a little bit more on a whim, just kind of like five minutes. They just presented that it was a program that you can go to. And uh, I'm more of a person to jump on new things that I don't normally, I don't know about at all. Um, it just seemed interesting. So I just came into here and found a lot of things to, that I like. Um, so. Yeah, so that's kind of why I mentioned some of the things here, because I think that a lot of people um, are interested to learn and kind of pave their own way in this self kind of interest journey, but they just don't know about it. So I think that if exposure increases for open source, like overall, especially if it's like a talk among um, other students, not just like the computer science students, then everybody would be more kind of like funneled into or like more into the idea of doing open source as like a main thing.
think the biggest thing, uh, just uh, for the camera, the recording, um, the question was that um, I've gone to a couple of events and podcasts and um, done some different things within open source. And then this is actually my second um, open source conference. Um, yeah, and then normally people wouldn't necessarily be as involved um, as like what I'm doing right now. So for me personally, the thing that's uh, driving me um, towards open source a lot more than other concepts that maybe I've been introduced to um, is just community. Um, overall, the people that you meet, I think is just a very engaging thing. Um, throughout college, um, I'd say that I did my fair share of networking, but I haven't gotten one to stick as much as open source has so far. Yeah, um, so again, over there for the camera, the question was how do, how do you kind of, I heard about the open source program over a quick, maybe five to 10 minute uh, talk or video, um, but how did it get it more kind of spread around? I think one of the biggest factors is just, even if it's that five to 10 minute um, talk or um, that moment where the professor kind of takes her time to talk about it even if it's just for a day um, I think um, one of the biggest ways would be to have other uh, professors to talk about it or just mention it um, during a day um, another crazy idea I was going to bring up here but I don't know if that's a thing in open source at all um, is make like not necessarily an ad, but like an, a very engaging video that can kind of be passed around. Um, a lot of people are using um, social media or like chats and stuff like that. And maybe they wouldn't necessarily go into a link and read uh, a bunch of stuff unless it has like a little TLDR. Um, but yeah, I think it's mostly getting other people to talk about it or just mention it, like getting in, in the conversation. Okay, um, so I think that uh, one of the ways that you can kind of get over the imposter syndrome or the fear of kind of getting into open source as opposed to, say, software engineering, or say that, am I getting that wrong? Are they heading into software engineering? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, one of the things to kind of remove that is like, um, I think... I was luckily enough introduced to like a very friendly uh, open source project um, to start off with. And um, the only thing to do in the project was not just code. So a lot, of, a lot of the imposter syndrome for programmers is that they don't understand certain technologies. Maybe you study Python and the project is in Java 
you know, uh, stuff like that. So I think it's important to find a way, uh, a project that has like a very low barrier to entry and just have somebody do that first task. Um, and, you know, if the community is very inviting, I think that that's definitely going to carry over onto the person. Because I think that's one of the biggest things that open source has as opposed to, say, uh, not necessarily everywhere, but uh, regular corporate software engineering. I think open source is a lot more friendly and inviting as far as I've uh, felt so far. Um, so yeah, I'd say pick a project with the low barrier to entry, uh, code not being the only contribution they can do, and then kind of slowly uh, build on top of uh, tasks um, that they can do, and then eventually you they'll get the confidence on their own to like jump into like a bigger thing that they might might not be able to do, but they'll figure it out. Yeah, so um, specifically the project that I started out with um, contributing to uh, into open source was called P5JS. Um, it's a JavaScript design library um, for those of you who don't know. But uh, specifically what made me feel like it was very uh, kind of like inviting in was number one, all of their communication forums. I never, I didn't see any commentary that was very harsh um or anything like that um if anything any corrections or anything were very constructive um that's one two um they definitely had it explicitly written out that newcomers were encouraged to make a contribution and then three um their documentation was very well laid out um so much so to say that i think it could be like documentation for dummies, you know, like you could just go in, read it, and then you know what the project is about, how to use it, um, how to contribute. So yeah. <laughs> 